what's up everyone? Welcome to the Sam Livecast. It's Wednesday. It's going to be a good week. Oh yeah. Wait, it's been a good week. We started. Yes. We started this week with the man, the myth, not even a legend. Because he's so bigger than life and Chicken <laughs> Charlie was here Monday. Guy's got a big heart, huh? <sighs> Definitely bigger than life. I love him. There's his website right there. I if love you're him. how great is he? If you're going to any of your county fairs throughout the summer, look for the deep fried food king. If you look up in the uh, dictionary, the Wikipedia, um, American success story. Oh yeah. His face has gotta be there, am I right? I'm actually gonna look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn really was gonna <laughs> An Armenian <laughs> born in uh, Syria. Mm-hmm. First in this country to Boston, then over here, he has done extremely well. Yeah, he has. With his food, with he, his craziness. Here's a little bit of trivia. Charlie does come up on the search results for American Success Story, right? No shit. He does? But, it, but it's Charlie Brown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, That's man. so funny. Why, why would that happen? I have no idea. Hey, by the way, welcome, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for telling your friends and coworkers and family and everybody. That's how oh, we yeah. spread the and word about this live cast. And we love everybody. You for it. Because mm -hmm. we do not spend a cent on marketing this. We thing. really do not. <laughs> hey, so um, let's see. A bunch of stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, one um, master chef sort of link that we will chat through. Oh, geez. First, though. Uh, this past weekend, I, uh, started as the Sam, the cooking guy, eat this radio show. Yeah. And so I don't think it's a surprise. It's not going to be a surprise to anybody that we kind of shoot out of order a little bit. We do that. That's the way it goes and it works for us. So there it is. That was Sunday. Who made the logo by the way? Um, yeah, we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we'll give that more attention when it's needed. But, 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 I've done a lot of TV. Yeah, yeah. I've done, I've done hundreds, hundreds of half hour and hour television programs. Hundreds, probably, maybe somewhere around 400, right? Yeah. Wow. I've been on the Today Show a dozen times. I've done live events with, with six, 700 people. You got like a billion Emmys. I got 14 Emmys. And you can see them right back there. Close to a billion, right? Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> Give or take a couple. So I drive to the radio station here in San Diego, where I go every Friday to be on a, the DSC morning show. I know that I've been there almost three years, every Friday. I know the people, I say hi to the people, it's a very comfortable place for me. Driving there today, I was so <laughs> effing nervous, I cannot tell you. Really? Oh, man. I, 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 I said to, Ke to Kelly at one point, if my heart doesn't pop through my chest, out of my shirt, I'll be very surprised. Well, why don't we take a look at what she said on Facebook? Number one, nervous stomach? Yep. Show notes? Got him. List of words I can't say on the radio <laughs> right here. Ready for my first Eat This radio show morning at 10 a.m.? You freaking bet. Wow. I wish I had the text messages that you were sending mom today. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, honestly, I have not been that nervous in a very long time, and I, I don't get it. And, of course, five minutes in, I'm completely fine. But that's, it, like, that's the thing about stuff that you do for the first time. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is yeah. you're sitting – in a control room, basically, you're not looking at no, anybody, right? No, I mean, like it's not like you're like you're looking at computer screens. Look at that. I mean, like yeah. that's wh it. What's what's it's so nerve wracking about that? It's in fact, it's less than what I'm doing right now. Yeah, because it's just me and that. That's what I got going on, right? Screens oh, yeah. in front of me <laughs> and me. Why would I be that nervous? Well, I do have a I, question for you. Yes, it was it more or less than the first time we did our first live live cast. Because for me, that was one of the most nerve wracking moments of my life. Yeah, it's a little it's also it's a little different situation because one, we were doing everything on our own for the first time. There was no like nobody knew serious uh, system set in place that was like broadcasting shows like like they have obviously at KFMB. And then second, 
we're video, so this, he has to worry about what he's doing. You know, the visual aspect of it. Whereas, right? With the radio, but I, you're look, just I, there. I get what Lynn's saying, and I like, think what yes. Lynn's, Lynn's saying is that everything was absolutely brand new for all of us. Then, am I right? Yeah, yeah, for all of us. Max, your dog is. Broken. I know. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. Okay, fridge. Sorry. Come over here with this. Zach what just walked in. Zach just Whoa, walked in. What is that? This is a this is a cleaned. What uh, is that? Filet mignon, a clean beef tenderloin from Costco. Jeez. This is dinner tonight. How many pounds is that? Uh, almost five. That looks amazing. Listen, listen. Ready? Hold on. You gonna drop it? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tenderize that meat. That's a huge slap of meat. But what's interesting about this is that, you know, where a filet mignon comes from mm -hmm. is here. When you go to a restaurant and you order a filet mignon, mm -hmm. it's like cut right out of here. This is the whole tenderloin. Okay? Yeah. Right? Beautiful piece of meat. Not fatty. Nicely flavorful. No muscle. It's protected in the cow from being in one of the parts that moves around. It's not near the legs and the arms and stuff like that, right? When you have a, a filet mignon in a restaurant, it's basically like cut right out of this piece right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're saying that you have a big like log of filet and they're I just like I have cutting. a big log of filet. And I say, I believe it's easier to cook one big log of filet than it is to cook 10 or 12 individual steak how about 101 individual steaks? 101 <laughs> individual steaks. well we're going to talk about <laughs> that wait i got i got a i got a moment to talk about that okay but so tonight i'm going to do this but i'm going to try something that i sort of half learned from david chang that's a that won the james beard award for i think best chef in america last year wow um and something that i learned off i don't remember what the hell it was I'm going to do what's basically called ghetto sous vide. You guys remember when we had the sous vide machine here? Yes. And sous vide is, is, con is, a, is a constant temperature water bath. Mm -hmm. So let's say that 130 degrees is sort of perfect, medium, rare. You take a steak, and you could do it in that bag right there, and put it in this water, and leave it for about an hour and a half until it became a perfect 130 degrees all the way through, like a steak. Right. And then... You just throw it on a super hot grill, cast iron pan, you mm -hmm. cook it on the outside. And what you get is you get beautiful medium rare all the way through. Kind of like this. Well, that's just. Well, well you can see that. the outside. Right, right, right. right. They see right? it. Exactly. So you get beautiful medium rare all the way through mm -hmm. with the seared outside here perfect. As opposed to cooking it on a grill and in an oven or on a stove, pot, stove top and then an oven where you get like perfect medium rare in the middle, but it's a little bit over here, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's still the, nice. It's the gradient that you're avoiding. It's the gradient, right? Yeah. So it's trying to give you an even temperature all the way through, and then you just finish it on the grill to sear it and give it some caramelization and some color and some crust on the outside. So here's what I'm going to do with that. And mom doesn't know this yet, and it doesn't matter. It's <laughs> Father's Day, so I don't care. I get to do what I want to do. In fact, I shouldn't even be cooking for myself today, but I'm going to cook for myself. Wait, Here's so what it is. You're having Father's Day <laughs> all week? Is that what's going on? He's we're shooting out of order, Lynchy. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we're doing. I'm going to get about 135, 140 degree water in a cooler. No! And then I'm going to put that in just like that. And I'm going to leave it for an hour, and I'm going to maintain the temperature for an hour, hour and a half, whatever it takes. Yeah, those coolers actually maintain the temperature quite well. Right. And like cooler, the thing is, if they could also be named hotter. <laughs> but that sounds really lame. <laughs> it sounds lame. Slash but hotter? think about it. They keep things cool. They keep things warm. Hot water in a cooler will maintain that temp. They keep whatever's in there. At that temp. To be whatever's in there. So yeah. I'm going to try and keep that that thing right there at about 130 degrees for... I mean, if it was an hour or two or three hours, it won't go beyond that as long as the water is not above that temperature. Right. And it, it will, like, the temperature might drop a little bit, but by the time, like, if you're putting 140 and you're right. thinking, I want my steak to be like 132 to 135, then that'll be perfect, right? Is that what's the plan? That's the plan. That's sweet. And then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to finish it on a super hot grill. I, that'll be it. 
I, I know it's the the whole like father's mentality, but didn't we do this last time? And Kelly was kind of weirded out by the. So why would we? We're, she's she's always not here. Out. I know. It's father's, <laughs> okay, Hawaii I'm just saying. Have, I'm just saying. Uh oh, wait! Somebody just delivered that fillet, though. <laughs> no, it's okay. She could be hiding. She upstairs. doesn't. No, she doesn't need to know how it's going to happen. Yes. True. That that's uh, that's the way to do that kind of steak, though. If you can, if you I mean, can, here's well, I'm going to try it. Look, here's the deal. I'm going to try it, and if we pull it off, we pull it off. If I can't pull it off, if I take it out of the water and it's like 120. Of course, I know how to get it up to temperature. Yeah, throw it in the oven, on the grill, throw whatever, it, you have. whatever I have yeah. to do. I'm okay, do so it. even if it was a little bit of a botched attempt, we can still salvage it. As as it's not I'm not going to. I'm not yeah. going to blow a eighty dollar piece of meat. Yeah. <laughs> with an experiment and not have any way to pull my ass out of it. Okay. Well, you are throwing an eighty dollar piece of meat into a plastic cooler, so. I know it seems a bit sketchy, but <laughs> yeah, if funny. you listen to David Chang, if you read David Chang's book. Um, he talks about the way that they used to sous vide in the early days. And it wasn't with a constant temp electric, you know, unit. Mm -hmm. It was by putting it in the sink and running the hot water at the wow. temperature. Adjusting the temperature on the hot water uh, furnace, the, the water heater. No way. So it came out at the right temp and it would stay there. And this is this is what constitutes a great cook. I think people are saying, okay, well, sous vide concepts way over my head. I don't have a sous vide machine. The principle is that it's the technique. It's basically it's technique. You're, you're trying to get the meat to a certain temperature using like an environment. That's exactly right. Water is just the easy thing. We all have water. Most all of us have coolers somewhere in our house. It's exactly. actually not that hard, you know. It's not that hard. So you know what? We'll report back Friday on, on how we did on this, and I think we're I think we're going to be okay. I'm feeling very comfortable about it. I think it'll be great. Mm -hmm. all right. And yes, you're talented, and if anybody can pull it off, it's you. Well. I don't know that that's absolutely true, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm pr fairly good at sort of MacGyvering a, a dinner together, that <laughs> exactly. kind of thing. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. So I was at uh, Fixtures Living on uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Fixtureslivingcom on the internet. Fixtures Living. Our best friends. Sponsor the show, our best friends. We love them. We do all kinds of great stuff with them. They do great stuff for us. I was at Fixtures Living in Costa Mesa, and I did a grilling event with Ethan Pixler, the sous chef of that store, right? Yes. And yes, it's weird that a, that a kitchen bath outdoor store would have a sous chef, right? No, nothing weird goes on there at all. <laughs> <laughs> I got my whole body inside I don't that know how. Room. You must not have been large there. I don't think I was large <laughs> well, there. Whatever it was, I'm very happy getting to that thing. Anyway, we did this <laughs> grilling event. And there was a whole bunch of people there, and we talked about grilling all kinds of things. Here's the, here's the master chef connection. The idea was we would show people how to grill vegetables and chicken and steak, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of make a meal out of it. So we get to the steak part and, and, and Ethan has just uh, like a dozen beautiful New Yorks, not cooked. Raw, nothing on them. Which, if I recall correctly, is one of your favorite cuts, a New York. I, I do. I love a New York. Mm -hmm. Well, I love a New York because it's a little less fatty than a ribeye. Yep. Ribeye used to really dig. Too much fat in it for me these days. I try not to eat. Whatever. But a, a New York is a lovely cut of me. Mm -hmm. Ribeye, tenderloin, New York. I don't know. I, like, I pretty much like anything. So we're talking about this. And I say, here's what I do when I go to cook a steak. New York, tenderloin, ribeye, flat iron, pretty much doesn't make any difference. Olive oil on the steak, kosher salt, pepper. At room temperature, goes on the grill, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You okay with that, Lynn? So far, yes. Okay. <laughs> Here's what Ethan says. And Ethan went to culinary school. And I'll just tell you, I really, really like him a lot. He's a... He's a I mean, we're not great friends, but I consider him a good friend, you know? We've not spent a lot of time together, but I would love to spend more time with him because he really knows the stuff. Ethan goes like this, two things. Number one, basically that olive oil is the devil. <laughs> when you put it on something that's going to go in a hot pan, on a hot grill, it's going to go rancid right away. It's going to mm -hmm. dis disflavor what you're going to do. And you would never pre-salt a steak ever because it's going to draw the moisture out now we'll remember our conversation last friday when we talked about beamy 
on MasterChef yeah. that chose not to season any steaks. And I don't think it was because he had some grand plan in his head that said, no, you don't do it then, you do it after. It seemed to me just a moment of confusion for him. Yeah, I think it's true. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about seasoning before or after, Len? I think it doesn't matter as long as you do it right before. So see, I think what Ethan is trying to say is when you salt anything, it naturally will draw the water out by, um, you know, by, by whatever scientific property I think is right. osmosis or whatever, right? Right, right. But the thing is, if you salt the meat like beforehand, like yep. let's say, let, let's actually t take that uh, filet that you're doing real, real quick. Right? If yeah, you yeah. salted it, put it in a plastic bag, then do a ghetto sous vide. Yes. When you take it out, I know this from experience, you're going to get a dry steak. And the reason is why you're, you're basically curing the meat while it's being cooked. But here's a, here's a point. So now I jump on the internet and I start reading about this because I, I don't quite mm -hmm. know what side I want to come down on. I know what I do just before I cook it. I olive oil, I salt, I pepper it, I cook it. It comes off amazing. And then I salt again after because mm -hmm. you lose a bunch of the salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is a school of thought that I read that says if you salt – not just before, but way in advance, like an hour before, mm -hmm. here's what's going to happen. It's going to draw out the moisture, and then the moisture is going to go back down into the meat mm. like a brine. And it's going to be juicier. Ooh. And it's going to be more tender. So there's obviously there's so some many, conflicting opinions. There's definitely conflicting opinions. And I can't read anything. I haven't read anything that goes... That's the way, or this is the way. So, here's my question to you: yeah. You've been a, on TV cooking for ten plus years and all over the place doing this. What would you think? I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not going to change my shit because I like what works for me. Yeah. So you season beforehand. I season before, but not like twenty no. minutes. Mm -hmm. I take the steaks out room temp. I take the steaks out. I let them come to room temperature. Before I go to throw them on olive oil, kosher salt fresh ground pepper, on they go. That's what I do. I, I think that works. And, and I, I can't complain. But then it, yeah. when they come off again, I salt once more. And that I learned from a, a restaurant up in uh, Sonoma, the Glen Ellen Star that Max you'll lead at next in July, I hope. Mm, for my cousin's uh, next wedding. Month, right, for, uh, for, the, for uh, Kyle's mm. wedding, right. So can I, can I read an article I just pulled up? Of course. There's this guy on Serious Eats, his name is Kenji, that does all these experiments when it mm. comes to, to meat and stuff. So th he does the things that we don't have time to do. Okay, so... Can I, wait. Can, I need, I, can, I just let me jump into the kitchen. Okay. I'm going to start this. Let me start this stuff. I won't talk about it yet. You take it, and, when, and then when you're done, I'll talk about what I'm doing in there. Kay. Deal. Go for it. So here's what we're doing. Um, you don't need to know what the outcome of this is going to be. <laughs> All you need to know is what I'm doing right now. This is eggplant. Like a big, beautiful globe eggplant that looked like this, right? Mm -hmm. I've sliced it into thick slices. They've got great body, the eggplant. <laughs> don't they? No. Like they're very sturdy they and do. like slick. I don't Absolutely. know what it is. I'm actually not a big eggplant fan, but for some reason I like those things. Yeah, you're going to like this uh, a lot. Okay, so I've got eggplant cut in fairly thick slices. Mm -hmm. I've cut the sides off of uh, um, a red pepper, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's literally this simple. Right? So you yeah. just want to cut around that quarry area. Right. And so this is what you, you, you're left with this. I can do this. Hold on. <laughs> Not too close now. Not too close. Nice. There you go. Right? You've got the good parts out of this. And if you really wanted to salvage like the pieces in that core area that you th think might be useful, you totally can do that. Yes. So now I'm going to take the eggplant. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it in here with a little olive oil. Okay. Which is the devil, apparently. Which yeah. apparently is the devil. It's and I don't really everything. know why, because it's not been the devil for me. Everything's going to explode. You know, you the, know I, the, I use grapeseed oil at home now. I don't use olive oil anymore. Oh, you, because the why? The flavor. I don't, I'm actually not, I don't enjoy the flavor of regular olive oil. I, I yeah. love the We All Love Olive Oils. I'm not saying that just because they're our sponsor. I actually do dig really good olive oils. But right. I find that the in-between stuff tends to have like an off flavor for, for me, personally. 
That's that's interesting because I I don't I mean I, 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 and then we have Tony Luke on the other hand who drinks the stuff so I mean like right. yeah oh man okay so like here here's all this is getting right now it's just getting olive oil so I've got red pepper yellow pepper um, big slices of eggplant and now some carrot slices that I'm gonna hit with a little olive mm, oil too carrot. that by the way just remember when you eat this I'm pretty certain you're not gonna hate it Lynn I I'm not saying I'm gonna hate it but look. I actually would not have thought to throw in a carrot into a veggie. Well, like, it's hey, number one. Look, it's color. It changes the whole thing a little bit. And so here's what I'm doing. I'm taking all the a the um, peppers. I'm throwing them on first. We're gonna have to do both sides of this thing, right? How hot there's, is your grill? It's not quite. It's pretty high. I mean, but it's you know it's an inch above, so it's not gonna get. It's not like it's in a pan. And you throw, if you throw all these things in a pan, you, look, you could do this outside on the grill. Uh, it wouldn't make any difference. You could do it in under the broiler. Any way you want to do this, you can do this. And these pieces of eggplant, I'll just throw here. Sorry, hold on. Let me just move this a bit. Nope, do your thing. Don't forget, pieces. everybody, we love it when you guys interact with us. Go to Sam's Facebook page, facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking Guy. It's right there at the top right. And tweet us at the cooking guy. And then big slices of the onion that go on here too. We've got the carrot, we've got everything. All right, that's gonna start to do its thing. I don't think I'm missing any part of this. So I'm gonna jump up every now and then, but, and just give it a little turn to make sure that it's not burning. But the point of that whole thing is to get all of those vegetables, nice, very happy, softened, and with some color on that grill. Mm -hmm. right there. Okay, so where were we? Can we we were finished talking about the steak. The steak. Yeah, I, I was reading this article while you were grilling the thing. It's it's actually kind of interesting. So, this guy on Serious Eats, um, I, I dig his stuff a lot. But he's talking about what happens when you sear the meat or when you salt the meat before you sear it. And so he's right. saying, look, um, immediately after salting, it just kind of rests on the surface. All the juice is still in the steak, just like we were talking about. Right. Within three or four minutes, it starts to draw out the liquid. Yes. And then around ten to fifteen, it you know, the, the brine that forms with the liquid from the meat and the yes. salt will start breaking down the muscle tissue. And then at the end of the 40 minutes, like you said, it actually goes back into the meat. So what his conclusion in this website I'm reading on Serious Eats is basically, if you don't have 40 minutes or more, yes, salt immediately before you cook, just like you do. Which is what I do. Yeah. If you have more than that, he says the best steak that he's actually had yes, is if you let it go overnight in a refrigerator. Can uncovered. you imagine? Wow. It's just, it dries out slightly, but superficial. It's only about a 5% moisture loss. And you cook out more anyways. You cook out like 20%, like the article says. And so I kind of want to try it out. I kind of want to take two steaks. That's interesting. You know, it it's, look, it's very interesting to eat. It's interesting to play with these things. Like the, the more I cook, the, the wiser, the older, the whatever I get. Like look at those vegetables. Mm -hmm. Pretty, man. They're pretty. And the smell in here right now from that. Seriously. No seasoning, no nothing. I mean, I'm going to get to that, but geez, that's really good. I what's not, wait, what's not really good is this picture on my computer. Show this. Do you recognize what this is? Oh, it's those are <laughs> two, <laughs> wait, sorry. People with terrible grocery two etiquette. Two freaking shopping carts. <laughs> shopping carts that all I had to do was walk along here and then go boom in there. And the douchebags left them right there. I took, when I parked here, this is my car, when I parked here, I got in my car, I took this cart, this cart, and I put them in there. Really? I hate people. That's your local spot. You got to. It's I the grocery people. store etiquette that no one understands. That's exactly right. I'm just Haven't jumping up for a we talked about second. enough of this? Well, the thing is, it's no not just grocery store etiquette. It does, no, it doesn't end. Yeah, that's the problem. That's true. People are going to be shitheads no matter where, how often, why. It doesn't stop. Well, the thing is, it's normal etiquette. You just put the stuff where it should be going. Yeah. And it takes you a little bit longer, but what gives you the right to think your what, time is more important what, than everybody else's? I, that's exactly what those people think. They think that their their time is more important. Right. And they go like this. Oh, they got a person to do. They got a guy to do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They got a guy whose sole job it is to take the carts that are misplaced, put them back into the pl It's just It's just mental. I don't like it. I don't like it. They try to stand to the side of those veggies so we can get a shot of them. Nice. There Here? you go. Perfect. Oh, man. Now that you're over there, we can really hear the crackling. Right. Can you imagine? Can you believe this? 
Wow. I love something that you can just kind of like get going and throw in and leave it alone, you know? Right. I mean, they need a little attention. I gotta, uh, I gotta turn the carrots and stuff like that. No, but. It's not quite on the level of, let's say, a jambalaya, where you lit literally throw everything in and then Well, leave it. our, wait. Don't say jambalaya. You have to say our jambalaya. Yeah, you're right. Our jambalaya. We did a live cast jambalaya that everything came out of a rice cooker and was amazing. Yeah. This is true. With, That's with one of the virtually best. no work, right? Yep. Go to the samlivecast.com and search jambalaya. J A M B A. I, I lo I'm sorry. I'm L A Y. -A. <laughs> I was that was hilarious. Go up, Lynn. Sorry. Yeah. A little bit up. G A M B Y. <laughs> I was focusing on like switching shots and then I <laughs> just lost it. All right, so I'm just gonna flip these guys. I'm trying to soften everything. That's where we want to go. We want everything to be softened. So let me get this straight. You just have oil on this right now. Yeah, right? it's just oil. Okay. And I mean, the seasoning, seasoning will come. We'll get there. Hey, so check this out. Um, IHOP has some new pancakes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Do you want to know what they are? Let's hear. Take a look. This one? Wait, let me guess. That looks like a ketchup pancake. It looks orangey. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Maybe some pumpkin. Wait, but then there's like red on top, so it makes me think strawberry. This is the jelly donut pancake. Oh, there you go. Wow. You get four fluffy pancakes filled with raspberry jelly and filled? polished off with real donut glaze. Ugh. Wait, it's filled with jelly? Like in the middle? It says that. I don't know where the hell it is. Yeah, jelly where is, is that? In <laughs> I don't know Maybe if it's in like here secret or if it's in the layers. In because the next one... There's a secret pocket. Oh my god. Is that cookie dough? No. It's Peanut butter. It's, it's actually worse. It's a tiramisu pancake. Oh. Buttermilk pancakes layered with sweet mocha cream, then topped with a drizzle of chocolate, whipped cream, and a dusting they of cocoa powder. They are destroying pancakes. Please just answer me this. Yes. Are oh. pancakes not sweet enough just on their own with thank syrup? You. Like thank I can you, barely. Thank you. I can't just order a, a, a set of pancakes on their own because it's too sweet. Oh no, that's true. So I don't even understand the people that can order those. You know what? So look, so. Um, Mom and I were in Carlsbad yesterday. We had... Uh, Part of San Diego. Car outside of San Diego. Mm -hmm. We had breakfast at this little breakfast place. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the menu, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to have because I'm trying to be relatively good. But I don't want to just have like a handful of, uh, you know, like three blueberries and call it my breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was a pancake, waffle, you know, French toast kind of joint. So here's what I had. I had a basically like a, a vegetarian omelet. Mm -hmm. There was tomatoes, there was zucchini, there was broccoli, there nice. was uh, onions, right? It was really delicious. She goes, what kind of cheese, what kind of, oi! <laughs> Damn, he's been so good. And then he just goes and does that. Look at, and look at Jilly just... Can you see that shot? No, I can't. Is he going for lucky right now? Jilly's doing this. She's like, like, <laughs> give him like the finger, like he understands the finger. Hey. Um. So I have that. She goes, "What kind of cheese do you want?" And I go, "Oh, um, Monterey Jack." And then I went, "Oh, no cheese." Huh. She goes, "Oh, all right." I didn't have any turkey sausage in it. I didn't have bacon. I didn't have pork sausage. None of that stuff. So you had, a, you had eggs with veggies. I had eggs with veggies. And I, I'll be honest, it was delicious. Oh, I'm sure. And then she goes, do you want fries or hash browns? Oh. Not and even I an went, option of like fruit? Wait. And I went, um, she goes, or applesauce, which <laughs> I, I hate. Wait, or she goes, sauce? or wait, cottage cheese. You? Ooh. I go, I'll have cottage cheese. Yeah. So I got the cottage cheese. Nice. It came. She puts everything down. I've got this beautiful omelet there. I've got the cottage cheese beside it. And she goes, would you like some fresh homemade salsa for the eggs? And I go, yes. I put it in the cottage cheese. It was amazing. Just salsa and cottage cheese. Just amazing. Straight cheese. Amazing. I'm telling you. Salsa. 
Amazing. I've not had cottage cheese, I don't think, for probably 25 years. Well, um, neither have I, and I think now we should do a show that makes a couple of good things with cottage cheese. You're right. You know what? Here's what I thought. There was a moment when I thought, I'm going to eat the cottage cheese, and I might like throw up in my mouth a little bit. Because there's some, for some reason, the idea of the, of the, hmm. the cheese, the, the little granular version of whatever, I didn't think I was going to dig it. I, I fucking loved it. I love this shit. Uh, you're, you're not the only one. I did a quick search for it, and some people... Act, it's not popular, but some people no. really dig it, you know? But I'm saying no toast, no bacon, and the whole breakfast was amazing. I got to go back to it's, my... Uh, it's incredibly healthy, right? Cottage cheese, yeah. Yes. I mean... It's basically just... Dairy. Incredibly is interesting because it's... Remember to stand to the side. What? Can you stand to the side yeah. a little more? Thank you. Let's see those beautiful vegetables. Yes. Wow, you can see them starting to soften up. But tell me if I'm right, Dad. You don't want them to be too soft. No. Uh-uh. Because you want maybe a little bit of the crunch in that burger. Yeah, here's what you want. I mean, look at it. Check this out. Oh, shit. Ow, 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 ow. Shit, <laughs> don't, shit. That don't was really hot. God. You okay, dude? Yeah, I almost got this on my new shorts, and I would have been really pissed. Uh, where do I go? I go here? Are you trying Can to show you see yep, this? There Let's you go. This looks like. Oh, nice. Okay. Right. So here's eggplant. Yep. Not cooked side. That's where we're headed. Wow. Oh, oh. Wow. Careful, dude. Hey, easy Look how pie. beautiful that is, right? Yeah, it's great. That's where we're going. Nice. Okay. Excuse me, Sunny. Oh, you look. <laughs> look at you guys can see Sunny right there. That's my little beagle. Not little anymore. <laughs> Not quite so pocket anymore. <laughs> All right, so I got the onions here. Hey, get your ass to the side. Carrots going. Beautiful. I got all this stuff. Let me throw. Hold on. Turn down what's going on in front here. Oh, you're going to... Trust me. This thing, you are going to really love. Wait, but we're not, we're not done. We're... But wait, we there's just more. got that. Wait, we got the tiramisu pancake. We got one more. Ready? No. No. Go back I'm to it. Not. There's the tiramisu pancake. Here's the next one. What is this? This is the Cro banana cinnamon. graham nut. Jesus. Like fluffy stacks of summer, it reads. Oh, that's what it's <laughs> like fluffy stacks of summer. If you were a fat guy at the beach I know. with a very like a small, diabetic summer, <laughs> right? There's nothing with a very a small summer. bikini bathing suit. Slices of fresh bananas grilled inside buttermilk pancakes layered with marshmallow cream, Ooh. graham cracker crumbs, and crushed honey roasted pecans. Where's the fucking summer in this shit? I know. No, don't you see how fresh that is? <laughs> it's so fresh and light for summer. Give me a break. That looks terrible. It's I mean, unbelievable. here's the thing, too. You think International House of Pancakes, they would know what to do with pancakes, but unfortunately what they do only they seem to know what to do with it is just to make it like an abomination, you know? Yeah. Let me just say, they need to change the name from International House of Pancakes, and I'm sorry if I'm going to piss anybody off, to the International Fat Guy House of Pancakes. Because <laughs> that's what this shit is. It's weird. I mean, well, okay, let's put it this way. If you were running a pancake shop, Sam, yeah. how many iterations of pancakes could you go through until you basically... Oh, like please. ran out of idea. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's please. Your namesake right? is International House of Pancakes. Right. So like, what can you do more? There's nothing international here. Well, there's definitely nothing international there. Yeah. Jelly Donut America. Eh. Tiramisu. They may claim that that comes from Italy, but you know what? There's no Italians that are doing this to pancakes. <laughs> this is an abomination Wait, to use I your word, Lynn, over there. And banana graham nut pancakes. Hold on. I don't think they make pancakes in Italy. That's no, like, they probably like don't. A I, you popular know, breakfast never, item there. I've never, you know, that's so funny because I've never they been. They don't do I don't, breakfast like us. You never been to Italy. Hey, you no. want to know what one of the more interesting things oh. I uh, saw in Europe was that they don't drink cups of coffee like we do. What they drink is a little tiny espresso, and that's it. Like, right. You can't go into a coffee shop and be like, "I want a tall coffee," <laughs> let alone a a venti Give me a or give me a twenty seven ounce coffee. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They give you a little espresso, little thing of uh, soda water, right. and then a little um, little cookie. Right. It's you amazing. Know. Right. Yeah. Hey, look at this thing. This is uh, 
a, a, a good graphic friend of mine, Brian Kim, put this together for something that I'm doing. Dude, that is just, cool. Just like, That's it's cool. just some, some, some cooking guy statistics. 924,000 plus people have watched the YouTube video of me telling Kathy Lee Gifford to stop talking. Jeez. We've got 14 Emmys. We've done 150 half-hour shows. You search Sam the Cooking Guy in Google, the first thing that comes up shows 15,400,000 results. Wow. I've got three cookbooks, and what's important is this right here. They're not self-published. Yes. Because a lot of people have cookbooks or books that they've self-published that live in their garage. That's not me. Just Cook This was on uh, Discovery Health. I've shot shows on those three very important U.S. Damn. Navy ships. And the uh, tourism boards of New Zealand and Hong Kong have had me twice in both countries. That's a cool infographic. I like oh, it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, he did. Brian Brian did an amazing job. Let me just say, yep. that is fucking impressive. Mm. And I apologize for my language, but that's the only Thank word you. that can accentuate how impressive that By is. By the way, speaking <laughs> of your language, somebody called at the end of the radio show mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. eat this, complained about my language. On the show? No and, way. And, or and the radio is not like the... You can't swear. It's not Your like number internet. two on the list was words I can't say. I can't. I couldn't swear. They I complain said, about. I said fricking and sucks. And they complain about that. They complain about that. Oh, well, that sucks. All right, I'm ready to finish <laughs> this stuff off. There's some sticklers. All Should right, make hop this in. happen. Yeah, cruise in. You're good. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, we're not doing the intro. You're just good. Okay. There please. you go. Wait, does somebody want to come out? Oh yeah, I'll come out. Oh, so good. Cut it. No, we're just, we're just gonna leave you hanging there. Oh, good. Thank you. Smells good back here. Does smell good, doesn't it? Stand to the side again, sir. Oh, I figure we're off now. Yeah, move your tush. I'm gonna wait for you to. Okay, hold on. Wait, give me one second. Over three, Lynn. We're still recording. We're good. So we're cutting to here. What's up? We're cutting to here, right? I can't hear him. He says he, we're, I'm, we're cutting to cutting, this point. Cutting right? to this point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, dude. All right, hold on. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. Okay. All right. So here's where we are. Everything is doing its thing. Uh, I need some room to. I guess I could do it here. I mean, I was going to do it here, but if I push all these vegetables up, I can probably do it right here. So I could do it with sourdough. Let's decide. Do we want sourdough or do we want this uh, beautiful little whole grain bun? Oh, shit. I, I kind of dig that bun, dude. Well, then. Yeah. You shall have this bun, my friend. <laughs> you know what I'm using? Yeah. Can you see that? That looks like a bread knife to me. It's not just a bread knife. It's a Tony Luke knife. Oh, yeah. Our friend Tony Luke from Philadelphia. So here's what we do. We're just going to cut this. Yeah, whole grain. Look at the beautiful seeds on top. I like it, man. Look at the color on the inside, right? So we'll do this. We'll give, give this a little bit of olive oil. That's right here. And we'll go face down. Well, there's already enough little oil here. You probably. got a friend down there. Right. Okay. Hey, did you see what your dog's doing? Dude, you got to get that. <laughs> the kid was like, it was like, Oh, uh, he's shy now. Don't be shy. Okay, go on. Take off. Take off, you little rat. <laughs> All right. So here's what this is going to be. Let me just clean up my spot here. This is going to be what Jilly, Max's girlfriend, is going to come over here and have a bite with. Oh. Because Jilly eats generally vegetarian, yes? Mm -hmm. Not vegan. There's a difference. She eats shrimp. 
She eats a couple things. There's, there's rumor that she may be coming back to the dark side. We don't really know <laughs> if it's going to happen yet, but that's okay. So we've got this bun grilling right here, trying to get some little bit of color on it, which is going to be amazing. We've got the red peppers, the yellow peppers, the carrots, the, the eggplant, the onions right here that are going to be really great. And here's what's going on this. Sorry. Two things. Would still make it pretty simple. Right here, which is, geez Louise. That looks like pesto. Not like pesto, pesto. It is pesto. It is pesto. And then this, softened goat cheese. Oh. So wait, wait till you see how good oh, this yeah. stupid thing is. And I've got a second bun then, so A, we can take a picture of a whole nether one all perfect for you, and then you can eat it, because I know how you are. Look at the beautiful wow. vegetables, right? Okay, we're almost ready. Wow, this is going to be amazing. Oh, I turned the heat off. That's why it's not happening. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I needed some heat, some, some heat right, right up in there. Maybe as a crew, we shouldn't have consumed those Bloody Marys before the show. Yeah? Maybe we shouldn't have, but <laughs> we enjoyed them. Did we not? They're great. They're great. I could All have right. another, man. Okay, good. Yellow, red, carrot, eggplant, onion. Look, you could do zucchini in this if you wanted. You could do broccoli in this. You could do broccoli rob in this. You could do spinach in this. Anything you want. Here's the point. In my uh, third cookbook, The Grilling Book, I call this a um, grilled veggie burger. And here's what makes sense. Most veggie burgers in restaurants are like, Nuts and seeds and twigs and branches and <laughs> shit like that. That's not what this is meant to be. This is meant to be something really super delicious with lots of flavor. And I don't understand why the people that don't eat meat would go to like the nuts and the twigs when you can still go to this, right? So while it's still on the, the grill here, here's what we're gonna do, watch this. Come over here, Maxie. We're gonna get some of this softened goat cheese and soften it up a little bit more by mixing it. Wait, which is the bottom? That's the top, so here's the bottom. So the bottom, we go like this. Oh, stop it, dude. I know, right? Stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> and now, with the dog not barking, pesto. You don't have to be shy. I actually bought the low-fat pesto, which is, Unbelievable to me, but I'm just very happy that I did it. It's perfect. Okay, so now watch. Here's what we do. We go red. Like this. Then you go yellow. And you're going to go a couple of pieces of the eggplant. Come on, you freaking eggplant. Get up in there. Or I will give you some shit. <laughs> And then the onion. Okay, give me a break. Oh, come on. Please? This is ridiculous. This isn't even right. It's not even fair. Bun gets another second. We're going to put it up here. We're going to cut it. And then we're going to be out of here. I'm not even sure I crave a regular burger right now. I want that. Right. Like a veggie burger. Like, back up for one sec, Maxie. Sorry. Oh, please, please. Oh, please. Somebody give me a break here. Cut me some slack. Watch. Ah, oh, Maron. Wow. Look what's going on there. Look at this. Nonsense. That's crazy. Do you know how good this is going to be? Jilly, come here. Come on, come on, come on. She can't handle it. It's going to be too hot, man. It's gonna be the best veggie burger you've ever had. Oh. And I know because of how you eat, this is. Oh, it's really hot. Careful. You think oh, yeah. you can handle that? Yeah. Okay, good. Wait. You ready? Mm. 
You ready to have a bite with me? It's really so good. Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay, I hope I don't burn you. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready. Hold on, let me get a bite here with you. One, two, Cheers. three. Cheers. Oh. Mm. Holy shit. So hot and so good. Is that amazing? Mm -hmm. Right, the gooiness, the pesto and the goat cheese are complete ten. So good. Just do that, even if you're putting it on like some pasta or something. But the fact that you've got it in here, with the eggplant, with the onion, with the peppers, with the, the carrots and stuff, this is just this is just mental, is what this is. Mm -hmm. And if you want mental, then have this. <laughs> if you don't want mental, then why are you watching? All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. Come right here. Come right here. Come right here. Come right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. We love you, don't we? Love you. We do. We love them. We're going to see you here next. Look at down here. There's a dog down there. <laughs> We're going to see you here Friday. More of whatever today's this week is. And um, we want you to eat stuff like this. Stop eating the boring stuff. Mm -hmm. Eat stuff like this. Amen to that. Thanks for hanging here. See you.